This is a public service announcement about lithium batteries. Are you charging your battery correctly? Because if you're not, your lithium and your bike can do this. The intro. That's right, YouTube. You know I recently installed the lithium battery inside the bike and I try to look on the charger that I have and I don't have, doesn't say that it's compatible with lithium, but lithium chargers, battery chargers, are different than regular trickle chargers, okay? So this is from my buddy's bike shop. This is a lithium battery by Ballistic and you see this? See how that's melted? If your trickle charger is not compatible for lithium batteries, especially an older generation charger, the battery itself can get hot and it can actually explode. As you can see right here. Don't believe me? I never really look at the instructions, but I happen to look at the instructions on the cover page and it says right here, explosion. Never short circuit the battery. Do not use incompatible charger device. Well, incompatible charger device gives you this, a doomsday scenario. This was in a bike that blew up. So you definitely wanna make sure you have a compatible charger. Look on the box if you have the original equipment box that the thing came in, check it out. If not, what you can do is just get a NOCO lithium battery charger. The benefit with the NOCOs is that you can actually charge three different types of batteries. Let me explain. If you have a NOCO battery, you can use a NOCO battery charger. The charger itself is, is gonna be compatible. Obviously, it's by the same company. But what's nice with NOCO is they have the NOCO 1, 2, 5, and 10. Unlike traditional battery tenders, shoemakers, different units, they charge at 750 milliamps, so less than one amp. The Genius chargers, the five chargers at five whole amps, the 10, 10 amps, the one, one amp, and obviously the two, the two amps. But what's nice with the NOCO is that you can also charge multiple units. So I have this here. When you get in the box, you get the charger itself. You get a bracket to help mount, charger onto your wall or something. And you've got your alligator clips that will also unscrew and you can have just the regular eye, eye loops for your battery. But, see here on the battery, you have 12 volt, which is your typical lead acid battery. 12 volt AGM, you have your 12 a volt lithium battery which in this case is in this bike you can do six volt which is pretty uncommon and what's nice about the upper models especially the five and the ten they have a 12 volt repair when a lithium battery loses all charge it's done it's very hard to come back lead acid batteries very difficult to bring back when chargers charge they charge at a linear pace with the 12 volt repair it adds various wavelengths and frequencies to bring help bring back that battery back to life if, if all possible what's nice about the genius 5 and 10 is you have multiple settings for wide range of all your cars or your bikes or whatever have you this is so this is a great charger it's a little bit more money the 10 is the top of the line and that can charge a lithium battery in less than an hour from next to nothing. The five doesn't go as much because it's only five amps, but it's still faster than you would have with your traditional milliamp, 750 milliamp um, charging unit. So this is great to have. I put the link in the description below along with the link of the battery for the bike itself uh, in case you missed the other install video, but it's very important that you guys have the right charger because this can happen.
completely melted, got really hot. So, do yourself a favor and get a compatible charger. If it doesn't, if it, if your charger doesn't say anything on it, I wouldn't take the chance, just get this. So, because I have the NOCO in this battery, I'm gonna try it out on the Fury. I don't have NOCO on anything else, so this will be designated for, for the Fury as, I, as of now. Also, a little tidbit with lithium batteries. They have the tendency to not want to run or stay charged with a constant draw. And what I mean by that is if you have an LED light system on your car, on the bike, if you have LED light system on the bike, some sort of radio, clock, anything like that, any other electronic devices, and that can possibly draw a little bit of a signal from the battery. Uh, it's very hard for the battery to keep up. Very simple. Once you get, you go on a ride, put these attachments into the bike. When you come back from a ride, all you gotta do is just plug it right in. I have it coming out the side of my bike. Plug it in. If you come back from a ride and you're gonna go back out two hours later, there, there's no really sense to plug it back in. You're, you're gonna go, but. Uh, for extended periods of times, especially in the cold, you're gonna wanna have your charger hooked up. Now, NOCO, they have their own proprietary clips, so it's unlike the other lead that I have, the typical alligator, um, the typical charger clips, they have their own. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to put this in the Fury to make my quick disconnect. But I just wanted to reach out to you guys and let you know the things that can happen if you improperly charge your battery. If you didn't know, now you know. I didn't know, I figured it out. Now I know, so now I'll let you know, so now you know. So now you can tell somebody else that you know what you know after what I knew that you knew so they now can be more informed about their lithium charges, all right? All right, that's today's episode. Get yourself a NOCO lithium battery. Get yourself a NOCO charger. Put them leads on that bike. Keep ripping, all right? Peace!